It's the John and Wendy show live for another Friday here in your world. So excited to be coming back uh, and having some fun with this lady over here. I am the outlaw John Roca. That is Wendy. How are you, Wendy? How are things? I'm doing good. I just, uh, I did a day at Knott's Berry Farm yesterday. I'm surprisingly Ooh. not sunburned because we forgot sunblock and it was like almost 90 degrees down there. Wow. Yeah. So, and there's not a lot, if you've been to Knott's, there's not a lot of shade. So I was like, I felt like when I went to take a shower last night, there was like maybe a triangle. Oh, yeah. But were I don't you, really see it on camera. So I think were that's you wearing a thing. triangle top? Is that why? Is that No, why I was wearing something like this. Oh, okay. Like a tank top. But I put <laughs> some block here and here and here. And I didn't do here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it burning. Not so much here or here. More like right here. Just wrong? right here. Did you put some block there? No. So we picked and we bought the most God, it was like an expensive tiny bottle like this thing oh. of some block, but we bought it because it was like 100, whatever. It was they jumped. It was like 30 or 100. And I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck 30 is gonna do for your skin. We ain't making any money <laughs> off the middle one. So it's either gonna be super small or a shit ton a lot. Shit ton of you you make 100. <laughs> block out the sun. <laughs> I love that idea. It was crazy. Oh, no, but yeah. uh, they yeah. had their boysenberry festival happening oh. right now. So we've gone since 2018 or 2019. Okay. What do they have there? Do they have pies? Do they have shakes? Do they have, you know, because uh, I remember in um, Palm Springs, they have that date place that has dates that you can go and taste like dates, chocolate bars, dates, food. You can have a date ice cream shake, which is incredible. I want to uh, go. I mean, yeah, it's, it's awesome over there in Palm Springs, like a little bit outside the town, just like heading north outside the town, I think, or west out or east outside the town. There's a little kind of dates place with a big old clown or something in front of it. And it's really cool. I mean, it's a hell wow. of a I, every time I go to Palm Springs, I always go there to either get a shake or a little chocolate bar. And it's great because the date stuff is perfect um it's perfect yeah for you uh, have you have you did, was there boys and was there any of that boys and bear shakes and stuff like that was it all of that there okay yeah so you know like knott's berry farm you, you've seen knott's at the grocery yeah. store at the, at the very least you know it's there they, and they always tell the whole story if you'd like walk around the park you'll hear the little story of how it all got started and it's very cute and you know there's snoopy and, and stuff um so the boys and berry festival is usually in the spring so it happens okay. from now until the end of april ish and they do a lot of boysenberry fusion. So they do have the pies uh, more than they just have year round because they do like a pie bar yeah. and they do like the boysenberry shakes. But they go outside of the realm of where you normally would put a boysenberry into a recipe. So they mm -hmm. have things like um, boysenberry elote. They have boysenberry horchata. They had a boysenberry and ham pizza, which we didn't Ooh, get. Boysenberry wow. sushi. We also didn't get that. Right. Um, so in the past, it's been amazing. Like we, the first time we went, I, I ate, it was a flank steak fresh Ooh. off the grill and they put a, a cream cheese boysenberry drizzle on top. I'm like, ew, I'm going to ask for it on the side, <laughs> right? The, it made it so much better. And that was 2018 or 2019. It was delicious. We wow. went back twice for that same dish. It was that good. Wow. And then in 2020, it was closed. So nobody did anything. 2021, right. it was a straight up like food and wine festival. There were no rides open. There were tables everywhere. It was like the best time ever. This yeah. year, somebody dropped the ball. Somebody dropped the ball and it was the least fun that I had in a theme park in a very long time. Oh, no. Yeah. There's a vlog coming. So okay. look forward to that. <laughs> look Don't forward to that. I hear you. But yeah, I was, we walked around like hot and gross and bothered and we're just like, <laughs> okay, maybe this next dish is going to be really good. Have you, do you know what uh, polenta? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I've had polenta you, a few times in life. Is it normally, okay, I have to ask because I've never mm. tried it before. Yeah. So maybe the first time of me trying polenta shouldn't have mm -hmm. been the boysenberry polenta. <laughs> yeah, probably not. That's not really the, the best way to do it. You know, no. You know. Is it supposed to be served hot? Uh, yeah, it can be because it's served as a hot porridge or okay. it can be a loaf. It depends on what you want to do. A with loaf? Person. Yeah, you can do a loaf because it's made of cornmeal. You can do a loaf that, either, that it's, it's either baked or fried or grilled, depending on how they want it prepared uh, for you to enjoy. I like it grilled Ooh. Uh, and I like it with sausages. 
Um, so they just, had oh, that dish. It huh? was a sausage trio with onions and peppers and polenta. Yeah, well, you can keep the onions. But the polenta was cold and the sausages were hot. Oh, wow. That's a, it, okay. No, I like it to be hot. I like it to be hot. Um, I don't mind it if it's going to be served cold, but then I right. felt like everything should have been served in the same temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have like the sausages that are hot, some are spicy, so it paired well. But oh. then I ate the polenta. I'm like, why is it out of the fridge? And then it, were, it was a little... <laughs> It was a little comfy. It wasn't, it wasn't, and I get the consistency. It's, it's grainy. Like, um, right, right. Some could compare it to like the American grits. Oh yeah. The grits. In Taiwan, we have another thing that's more, the consistency is more close to the polenta. So I was like, oh, this is very familiar. I don't know how to say it in, in English, but in, in Chinese it's called xiao mi zhou. Um, yeah. and I think it's like a cornmeal situation, but typically we don't serve that cold, but this was like out of the fridge cold. You got to calm it down on the Chinese. Don't speak the Chinese because like I have after seeing everything everywhere all at once last night, like you just spoke some Chinese right now. My mind went into seven different movies. So Which universe that. am I in right now? I'm, I'm still recovering from that movie. Everything <laughs> that movie put me through. So when, I swear, I'm not lying. When you just spoke Chinese, I was like, oh, shit. So I, I'm just like, it's super nervous. It's, was it uh, captioned when, when she spoke Chinese? Yes. Yes. Okay. The whole, the whole time. The family speaks Chinese. It is captioned. Yes, okay, absolutely. Cool. And uh, I know we can't say too much about it, but I'll say this. I don't know where sh uh, the, the actor, short round, the guy who plays short round, I don't know where he's been. But oh, he, he was in, yeah. uh, what's that? It, Aloha, Aloha movie on Netflix. The director is also Taiwanese. Oh, okay. It's like a love letter to Goonies. Oh. And he's in it. Really? And it nods to that, like, he's not Data. Right. But it it's funny because the the kids in the film go through a whole situation in Hawaii that's very similar to what they do in right. the Goonies. And he that was the first time I saw him act in, in anything in a long time. I didn't yeah, even find, know he was in this movie. Finding Wakana. Finding Wakana. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. For 19 years, he has no credits according to IMDb. Where has he been for 19 years? Because he was excellent in the movie. I mean, excellent. You think he in was training oh, like a Jedi? Was, He's just... Is he a Jedi? <laughs> is that what you say? He's, He's a Jedi? He was training like a Jedi, just honing his acting skills. He's like, wait, I'm, I'm ready for this movie. Yeah. The universe is going to call on me, and they did. Oh, my God. He's so good in the film. So I good. I can't I mean, wait to see it. Is. Really, everybody is, including James Ong, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I, look, all I'll say real quick is I can't say too much. I can say I enjoyed the movie. That's what I can tell you. I enjoyed the shit out of that movie. And be ready. Be ready because it's going to exhaust your brain. Be ready. You may want to leave the theater at some point. I know I did because I needed to kind of recalibrate my brain a little. So I had to hold on to the armrests and let my mind kind of do the work on its own until it finally kind of leveled out. And of course, Wendy just shattered it by speaking Chinese. <laughs> the show. Um, anyway, uh, so we're going to talk about all kinds of things going on in the world of entertainment here over the next hour or so on the John and Wendy show. I want to encourage you all to please send in your cheers, your bits, send in your stream labs there right above Wendy's head. You know, support what we're doing here on the show. Support us. If you enjoy the show, coming to you live every Friday. And for those of you watching later on youtube you can always send stuff in uh, some stream labs or whatever just say hey just supporting the show love what you guys are doing that'd be great as well and you see the address right above wendy's head it's in the description of, of in the description of this video but i'm also going to put it in the chat a few times as we go along here and uh, we'll go through everything uh as we go we got and we'll get into what's trending we'll have some reviews and recommendations for you near the end of the show for sure but wendy we got some breaking news uh, what do we got going on here in the world of entertainment right off the bat some stuff that broke today I mean, most importantly is the fact that we have new emotes on the channel. Hey, mm -hmm. yeah, we got some new emotes. Yours haven't popped up yet. Nope. But, nope. But but my face is in there. Of course, it's a better face than mine. <laughs> of course, I got approved. <laughs> Mine's like this, so they're not gonna approve it just yet. They gotta check it. They gotta make sure. They gotta make, make sure, sure it's not somebody else. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mom, we're already giving you love for the uh, Moon Knight hat on your head there. Giving you oh, more. thanks. Yeah, we're going to dive into that just a little bit. No spoilers, mm -hmm. though, because no I'm still spoilers. still under embargo. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about this uh, in in a, in a little bit. But let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about uh, this is coming this this Saturday this Sunday. It's mm -hmm. happening. The Oscars. 
So uh, first and foremost, yeah, let's. I think you you've already talked about this uh, earlier this week on. I think it was either with Jeff or with yeah. buddies, but yeah. the whole Rachel Zegler thing was really surprising to me. Yes, um, the fact that she wasn't invited to the Oscars, yeah. regardless of the film that she worked very hard on and is the lead of, was nominated or is nominated for best picture yeah the director of her yeah. film is nominated once oh, again yeah. Yeah. for best director um her co-star uh, ariana debose you know um nominated for best supporting actress so mm -hmm. it's just surprising that like i don't know maybe they didn't invite the full cast to i'm not sure about that because i really hadn't seen anybody else in the cast spoke up about it but that really yeah. was kind of shocking uh, and then I saw a little bit of like pointing fingers because people were saying that, well, the Oscars, um, you know, allot a block of tickets to the mm -hmm. studio and it's up to the studios to di distribute. And I was like, I've actually never, because like, I don't work at the Oscars. I, I don't know the inner workings of it. Um, yeah. But then if that's true, does that mean they gave so few tickets that the studio couldn't distribute them correctly? Yeah, this is an interesting game. I said this yesterday on Hot Mike that I feel like Rachel Zegler is the AOC of the entertainment world. She knows exactly what she's doing with social media. She knows how to play that game and pluck that string correctly to get the result that she wants. And listen, she didn't make a big deal about it. She just tweeted about it. She didn't go on multiple outlets. She no. gri gripe to a bunch of people. She just tweeted it out saying, hey, I'm not. it looks like I'm not getting invitation to Oscars. Oh, well, I'll have to cheer on my West Side Story people sitting at home with my boyfriend. That's what she yeah. said in her sweatpants, yeah. all right? Yeah. People took up the cause and went crazy. Now, I think she knew that was going to happen, or she maybe factored that in as a possibility. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know, play the game. And, every, and a lot of people cared. And the outlets picked it up and said it was a big deal. And because she's a young Latina lead and Hollywood's crowing about diversity all the time, you got to be aware. <laughs> the other side of it is, though, she's shooting Snow White uh, in yes. another country. And right. so... Like maybe D Disney was, I think you're right, uh, uh, Wendy, Disney was allotted a certain number of tickets, but right. so they thought, well, she's busy shooting Snow White. She's gainfully employed. We yeah. will have to stop shooting for the day or a couple of days, get her to, on a plane back. Right. She goes and then get her on a plane back. And maybe they felt it was not a financial, financially viable thing for them to do. Mm -hmm. And then, but then, you know, the uproar was so big that they yeah. made her a presenter and and then she immediately tweeted out, "Oh my God, everybody!" The Taylor Swift apology or Taylor Swift response. Me? Oh my God! Thank you so much. <laughs> Again, I'm not trying to paint. Rachel's smart. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to play social media. And then the second tweet was about thanking everybody in the Snow White production team for letting her have the time to go. So she mm -hmm. was busy. All right, she yeah. was busy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So uh, to the, this idea that she was sitting, going to be sitting at home, uh, you know, waiting around for the Oscars. Was ridiculous. <laughs> Well, I mean, sad union. You don't, you can't work on Sundays unless they yeah, want to get, right. unless they want to pay you double time. Right. So, so technically, she was correct. <laughs> yeah, technically, she 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 would have been, she would have had the day off unless they were yeah. they were doing some some additional like weekend shoot, which is kind of rare for yeah. SAG projects because you do have to pay them the the money for that. That's um, right. From, unless that's yeah, that's no, still the same, right? Yes, absolutely, still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I think that. It wasn't that I hate to blame it on the Academy, but I don't think that it's Disney dropping the ball. I think it's many no. a times we've seen many actors, actresses who works on multiple projects at the same time and still yeah. manage to make it to the Oscars. Uh, so the most recently, though, um, she has been announced to be a presenter for yes. the Oscars. So yeah. I'm excited for her. She is going. Can't wait to see what she's going to wear and what I don't remember what uh, award she's presenting, but I'm happy that she is now going to attend but i think we could yeah. have avoided this and she they could have you know what i'm saying like give her the ticket give her the option yeah. of like you're invited mm -hmm. and then her could to look at her own schedule saying i don't know man i want to focus on this yeah right and enjoy the break or she's seriously like so new you know up and comer in hollywood yeah. that it would have been really nice for her to have gone to her first oscar to celebrate right in person for her breakout movie yeah you can't I tell me that, that would have been yeah. The DJ Khaled should be presenting 
and not Rachel Zegler, for the love of God. So, we do love a DJ Khaled, but... Yeah, no offense to yes. DJ. I love DJ Khaled. Yeah. I mean, I'm on one, but like, dude, you need <laughs> yeah. to have, you know, Rachel Zegler roll up in it. It's <laughs> kind of surprising. And Mumra makes an excellent point here. Should mm-hmm. the Little Mermaid actress be technically too busy shooting her movie too? Haley Bailey is on the list and mm-hmm. was, it was invited. Uh, and she, her movie hasn't even come out. She's not even a star yet. Her movie hasn't oh. even come out yet. So just kind of a little shocking about how they went about handing out who was presenting what, who was presenting in mm-hmm. what way. So, you know, um, yeah. So interesting. I, I, I'm still working out my feelings on Will Packer in this whole situation, to be honest with you. Cause I mean, you're going to have a two black female hosts. You can't throw a Latina in there to host the show with a black woman, with a white woman. Come on now. Come on now, Will. Come on. I know you got to rep your community brother, but there's other people of color who want to shot at some stuff as well. Now. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. No, no there disrespect you go. Real at all. Are you um, still watching it? Of course. I'm going to do a live watch along either on Twitch or YouTube. I got to figure that out. See which one has been a, uh, the right situation for me. So, uh, we Zach Mendoza keep. says, oh, so do the presenters usually get announced this late? You would have thought they would plan that months ago. Yeah. It was probably planned. Uh, so they just probably did some shuffling. Yeah. Uh, you can you can add someone. To maybe maybe she was added um to a person who was presenting solo and now they have a person to present with that's probably is what happened because they can't pull anybody at this point like i'm sorry we can't have you present anymore like (laughs) no (laughs) i bet they're not doing that uh but in any case we've been keeping our eyes on the oscars this year there there has been it's been a a bit of a thing um even though you know uh so (laughs) Roka sent me this thing this morning. He's like, let's talk about this. So yeah. I just want to read the headline to you guys. This is via deadline. Oscar protest rumblings grow could turn ceremony upside down. I don't think there's ever been this much of a, um, how do I say, upheaval mm. about the Oscars in the yeah. past. Yeah. Not really. Not to this level. I mean, yeah. certainly you've had actors turn down awards or you've had the public call out the Oscars for having the awards during like a war or during a, right. a right after an event or something like that. Right. Certainly that's been something that's been a, a, a part of the clamoring about the Oscars, but this is different. I mean, from cutting those eight categories and they are cutting them from the live broadcast, they're shooting them separately and putting them on video and airing them Clip it, clips of them from the live or edited versions from the, in the live broadcast. No, mm-hmm. no denying that. But the fact that they're not showing them live and having them be a part of the telecast, a number of the members of those unions are quite upset. And some of those members might be presenting awards or might be winning awards. And there is some sort of organized protest being talked about where they show up with their union pins upside down as a form of protest, uh, Wendy, for their categories that focus on those uh, performers in that union not mm-hmm. being broadcast uh, live during the ceremony. So, so interesting. Well, I mean, I kind of, think, I kind of love that because I like speaking truth to power, I like protest. But what do you think about it? Is it is is this a danger for the academy overall? I mean, I think it goes to show that they have to really think things through before they just announce cutting a whole eight category. Yeah. Uh, it also makes those eight categories feel like they are less than when people, the general, a lot of, and I'm not talking like you guys who are watching because if you're watching, you're tuning into the Oscars and you understand the Oscars and you appreciate right. all aspects of filmmaking. Right. But I think for, let's take like my parents, for example, they're older. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe less my dad, more so my mom, where if I explain to her the Oscars, because she's really watched maybe a couple. But, you know, for the most part, they're the category she looks forward to, you know, um, best supporting actor, actress, best actor, actress, best best director, best picture. I don't even think she maybe best song and maybe best uh, animated because because of me. Um, but because you know she fed me a lot of animated movies when i was growing up she's like here watch this um yeah. so uh other than that like she doesn't tune in specifically for like editing cinematography she just she doesn't really get it right there's people that don't fully understand that it's more than just what you see in the final product yeah 
there is producers who have to put all this together, coordinators have to put all this together. There's costuming, mm-hmm. um, hair and makeup, research that goes into set dressers, the people who craft the sets. Like there's so much more that goes into a film and people just really see the glamorous part of it because that's the final product. Yeah. So I just worry that, I mean, I think it's good that it's being called out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that moving forward after they, we'll, we'll see what happens after this year. Because right. the way they package things together. Uh, but right now it's making it feel that these eight categories are just like mimic when they're <laughs> when they're not. Yeah. And yeah. and so I do like that people are showing solidarity by I'm gonna be watching. I don't usually watch the red carpet. Mm. I watch usually the very end, like the pre-show. Mm-hmm. Uh, because mm-hmm. usually, usually, well, back in the days like Collider, you know, I'd yeah. be busy running around doing stuff. Oh, that's but, right. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to watch the carpet even if I wanted to. But um, this year I might actually tune in and, and see because I want to look for the lapel pins yeah. and see yeah, if any it... of them are upside down or if the camera are going to be instructed to not show. It just, I, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's me awesome. spitballing. Oh, when that's, that's I'm spit, but the lapel, I mean, for yeah. this is the perfect, like, this is your mid. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, this is not cut off. Like, if, if you were, if you have those cool, crisp lapels, like, yeah. You right about here. You'd have to be right here if you want to cut it off. Right. And That's they don't they don't usually show because they want to show the outfits. Yeah. The other so, option they're saying is they might turn their Oscar upside down and hold it upside down as they if they win it. Which is really cute. That's a very obvious thing. Is Frances McDermott? No, she's not in the running this year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she would do it. You know she'd do it. Oh yeah. She'd, totally. she'd do it. She'd be like, look. I love the Academy, I'm sure. Thank you for the recognition, the awards, but also for the yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. She would 100% would have done it. She totally would have done it. <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, I like the idea of protesting with a larger object. That's, that's on, that's, you can't, you can try to edit that out. The music starts playing. Do a camera action. They play I mean, them off stage. Yeah, I mean, the way to avoid it is you start talking, you just hold the Oscar right there upside down by your face so they can't really close up on anything. Except just go out to the audience, which I suppose they could cut to. Yeah, but, but uh, that's the poo. Nobody yeah. would. You, you're supposed. Your attention should be at the, you know, the acceptance yeah. speech. And if these are big enough people with big enough followings on social media, when do you know they'll take pictures of themselves holding the Oscar upside down as a kind of protest? And that might be millions of people who see they that, uh, you know, and, and react to it. So we shall see. It's and by possible. the way, all this hullabaloo with the categories. They ended up selling out all the ad time anyway, and they were charging, I think, one point two to two point two million dollars or two point million. So we're getting more ads this year. Yeah, we, I think we're getting more ads this year, and they sold out all the ad spaces. One point two to two million dollars per thirty seconds. That's what it was, and they sold them all. So for all this crying about ratings and crying about all this bullshit, they were still able to make their money selling the ad space. So to me, I. It was a bunch of nonsense, and now they're gonna have to. They're gonna spin this in so many ways, and it's like, just do the fucking ceremony. Wow! Don't sell the ads. Who We've gives had a the shit same about category that? for so many years. Like no one's, no yeah. one's clamoring for you to cut. The, no, nobody said that these people don't matter. Cut their yeah. category. Nobody yeah. ever complained about that. Those are actually the categories that they they they've cut are some of the ones that I am looking forward to every right. year. So. Yeah. Especially like uh, it'll feel very different when you see the pre-made package, you know, pop up. Yeah, and they're like nominated and presented to. Like that's just going to be real weird. I don't know. Yeah, Kiki brings up an excellent point, real quick. Maybe do something to so to similar to how the Grammys do it, have a separate ceremony for lesser-known categories and have the major categories aired on TV. But Kiki, that's the point. Mm-hmm. What you're implying is that certain categories are major, certain categories are not, and that is where the issue lies. With some of these categories, especially score and editing, those are considered pretty major parts of a movie. So to somehow me- me- insinuate by not broadcasting it live that it is not as big of a deal as best actor, best picture, best director, I think is a way of, of sowing dissension in the ranks of artists and creatives on a movie set because everyone knows it's a collaborative process, regardless of what an arrogant director will tell you. It is a collaborative fucking process. Mm-hmm. And so um, kind of showing them on a separate ceremony, you're essentially implying they are lesser than and no union wants to be seen as lesser than, especially in the yeah. movies. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, all right, let's move on, Wendy, to our next tier. And just a reminder to you all, uh, the Streamlabs Super Chats are open. Streamlabs address right above Wendy's head there. She's pointing to it. So, And I'll, I'll put it again in the chat. Send in support, send in love, send in your, uh, your bits and your uh, cheers. Uh, we're all for it here on, uh, on the uh, John and Wendy show. So, uh, All right, Wendy, where are we off to? Well, we're going to stick in the, uh, the Oscars round for just a, a second longer okay. because I know it's coming up. Uh, but what uh, – and I want the chat to kind of chime in on this as well. Mm. What are our predictions for some of these? We'll just go with Best Picture because we do have a show <laughs> to yeah. run. So we can't, we can't go through all the categories as much as we, we love to. Um, but for Best Pictures, who would you like to see win and who do you think will win? Oh, I think Power of the Dog is going to win. I, I just saw it again. I agree. This morning, I saw it again this morning just to kind of get my head a little squared away. And I got to tell you, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful film. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful film. And I enjoyed it. Uh, I really had a good time with it. And later on today, I'm going to post the conversation I had with Steve Morris from the Cinephiles on the channel because we've been doing the Oscar series profiling each Best Picture nominee. And I came out pretty strongly for this film. So I think it's going to win Best Picture. I think Coda is a good film. It's a yeah. heartwarming film. It's, it's a moving film and it's a powerful film, but there's an artistry here to power the dog that I think is undeniable. And I think it needs to win best picture to showcase the, uh, the um, actual best film of the year. Yeah. What do you think, Wendy? Uh, I agree. I do think the power of the dog will Mm -hmm. snag best picture. Uh, I have two films that I'm championing. Uh, One is Coda. Yes. Uh, like I boohooed like a friggin' I just I boohooed so hard when I watched it. I didn't think it was going to get me in the feels that bad. And I was like, why am I crying so much? Uh, <laughs> and the other is Drive My Car. Oh, yeah. Drive My Car is fantastic. And I worry that not enough people have seen it. Uh, because again, the foreign language barrier, you know. Right. Because it's all subtitled. Yeah. I yeah. saw it Tuesday. Took an afternoon. Sat down with it. I loved that film. Mm-hmm. It is a beautiful film. And there is so much that you're challenged by as you're watching the movie. You know, everyone was like um, <laughs> the, the dark water film or whatever. He's like sharing his <laughs> wife with other men. I get that. This yeah. is a way more interesting approach to that kind of possibility in that, it, you know, there's so much going on here in that kind of opening 45 minutes of the movie that challenges you, especially as a, as a man, challenge you to understand that situation and then as the film progresses and you and, and you get the next part of the movie, mm-hmm. you're watching a whole new relationship. And then that last part of the movie is pretty powerful. So it is a movie that takes its time. It earns its three hours. And once you dial into the characters, you connect to the characters, you're going to enjoy the ride that you go on here. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so those are our predictions. Let us know what you think in the chat. And then before yeah. we go on, move on to our next category, we do have a uh, cheers oh, from yeah. Mumra. Thank you so much. Mumra writes, uh, could they film the Oscars and then air it over two nights instead of cutting time things, uh, cutting the time down, split it over two nights? Well, now we're talking WrestleMania because that's what's happening. <laughs> with WrestleMania, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, it's going to be over Saturday and Sunday night, four hours each WrestleMania. And look, they, you can't do what you're talking about because Mumra, they're barely able to get good ratings showing the ceremony as it is. If you spread it out over two nights, you're really thinning the crowd <laughs> of the people that would watch this thing. Uh, I don't think uh, a lot of Oscar watchers would watch uh, what six hours or five hours of the Oscar spread out over two nights. I think there might be some issues there. And, and I, listen, everybody in Hollywood supposedly is very liberal, very progressive and all that, which is nonsense. Not true. It's very, uh, a lot of different points of views there. Mm-hmm. The ego of who's going to go on Saturday and who's going to go on Sunday, the egos of the unions will get involved at that point, And they'll still create that Saturday is somehow uh, a lesser night to go with your category. So e- either way you split it, there will be fights, no doubt, if you were to split it out over two nights, over which category goes on Saturday night, which category goes on Sunday night. So um, I-, I don't think there's a solution in that way. And I think in the end, it should have just, just leave it alone. The Oscars are what it is. Have a fun night, do the great montages. Just know you're going to have long speeches, try to play people off. And, but you're also going to have really sweet, tender moments and honest moments and real moments of people being overwhelmed by winning. Um, and you can make careers 
uh, yes. on Oscar night, Wendy. So to me, they've done way too much overthinking on this and just let it be what it is, you know, mm -hmm. and take the hit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look yeah. at all those ads out there they've sold. They already have the money. Yeah, it's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, it's I think pay for the menu, it's pay for the, the, the venue. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so <laughs> much. Yeah. I think we, we've got some more bits that came through here from, oh, uh, from uh, uh, Brian Brawler, who loves you. He's, Ooh, uh, thank 100. you. Hi, Wendy. Hello. You thank you, Brian. 200 Brian. bits there from Brian Brawler. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Um, nice. We've also got a couple of Streamlabs that have come through. Doug, Doug Developer says, hi, guys. John, I noticed on your Twitter feed that you saw the new Michelle Yao film movie last night. You didn't <laughs> what you thought of it as an Asian child of immigrants. I'm so excited to see this, and I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much. Well, you're going to have to watch my review, Doug, uh, which I don't think I can put up yet. I'm not sure. What when the is the embargo is. for that? I don't know when the embargo is for it. Mm. I, is, do you think it's yeah, on the... The it should be in your email. The RSV in RSV. Okay, the your embargo should be up because it's showing today at AMC. There you go. Yeah. See, so it, it should showing. be. Hold on. Let me. Let me. I always check Rotten Tomato because you know if people are posting, critics are That's posting. True. That's to true. There, then you know everywhere. Okay. Everything everywhere yeah. all at once. Woo hoo hoo! Whoa. Okay. Ninety six percent. You can post yep. it. That's ninety six percent for critics on Rotten okay. Tomatoes. So certified fresh. Ninety three percent audience score. Yeah. So it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. But like I said, it's going to challenge you mentally. So just be ready for it because there's a lot of visual images. There's a lot of stuff they're asking you to accept in the premise of this movie as it goes along. And mm -hmm. all the multiple universes that pop up, you're going to have a little bit of time in your mind trying to keep track of everything, figuring out what universe is happening with who and what. And because... I don't want to give anything away. Just say that yeah. that's all that's happening. So I don't want to say too much, but it is an excellent film. And the Daniels have done a phenomenal job with directing this movie. Um, and A24 should be happy. And yes, there is good action, but it's not just about the action. There's a really powerful emotional story being told here that I would, I got emotional, emotional. Okay. So emotional damage it was emotional damage <laughs> by, the end, by the end of the movie let me just say that right now so i'm that's all i'm gonna say uh because nice. i don't want to ruin it for anybody uh, all, yeah. i encourage you to go see it absolutely absolutely excellent um excellent. and then one more here from drunken prayer says i refuse to vote on the basis pig was not nominated for best picture or Nick oh Cage pig that. yeah that's fair drunken but do you do you have an Oscar vote, Drunken Prayer? I didn't know you had an Oscar vote. <laughs> Did you have an Oscar vote? Not tell me. But I, I hear you, man. Maybe you're saying the popular vote. You're not voting for the popular vote because Pig or, or Nick Cage were not nominated. And I totally mm -hmm. respect that. I respect that. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, what do we got next uh, here, Wendy? Let's talk some box office. Uh, you know, so we have The Lost City, which is currently out uh, out today officially in mm -hmm. theaters. And it's looking like it's going to find it's already hitting 2.5 millions in the previews. Yeah. Uh, and they're expecting it to hit 25 to 30 million for mm -hmm. the opening weekend. And then in other news, Spider-Man No Way Home crosses 800 million <sighs> this weekend. That thing is still making the money. Yeah. And Batman is at 311.4 million. Wow. Um, wow. It might, it might be doing around 20 million this weekend. Still, still $20 million this many weeks out from its premiere. Pretty incredible stuff. And yeah, uh, you know, I seen Lost. I had a really great time in the Lost City. Will you forget about yes. it the next day? Absolutely. But, but is it a good place. time? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Both of them. And we'll be giving a little bit more of our thoughts on it a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, no surprise, 2.5 million, that bodes well. The 30 million bodes well. It's 75%, I think, right now on Rotten Tomatoes. So that's a positive as well. Uh, yeah. And it's a nice return to form for Sandra, kind of going back into a romantic comedy, but with a new kind of twist, a new kind of approach here that, that mirrors our changing perceptions of romantic comedies in 2022. So I think it's fantastic. So I, I think it's going to absolutely top 30 million. Might even top more than 30 million depending on how many people are feeling excited to go see this film and you know people love sandra bullock wendy yes. i sat next to two young ladies at the screening because there's a combo kind of press fan screening uh -huh. and i uh, there there's some program some sh some uh, thing that goes on here in san diego 
that was created during COVID where these young women all got together and created an organization and they go do stuff together to kind of have human contact. Yeah. So they were invited to come see uh, Lost City. I was seating two seats away. I put a popcorn down and the girl, very funny, she reached over. She goes, thanks for bringing us some popcorn. It was very funny in exchange. And then I said, what are y'all doing here? So yeah, we're here part of the society. We're here to watch Sandra Bullock. We want to champion Sandra Bullock. Because I initially said, oh, are you guys here to kind of admire Channing Tatum abs? And they froze for a minute and go, no, we're here because we love Sandy. I was like, you know what? I'm going to shut my mouth. Absolutely. Sandy <laughs> I, you know, she's great. So, you know, yeah. I got fooled. People do love Sandy. She's uh, fit, man. Yes, yeah, she is. She's really, really fit. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. No, she looks, she's fantastic in the film. Her timedic, uh, comedic timing mixed with Channing Tatum's, just like you think oh, yeah. these characters are kind of like oil and water. And I think maybe that's what makes the comedy so great. Yeah. It's because yeah. their interaction with each other. It's yeah. so, I don't want to give too much away, but we do have a, a cheers okay. from, uh, I lost it from, oh, oh no. AZ Badfish? Is that what it was? Yes. Was... Looking forward to dragging my wife to Lost City. <laughs> Wait, why are you dragging your wife? Shouldn't... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, She I will love it. it. Yeah. I think she will love it. Yeah. <laughs> I think she will love it. I'm excited. Let us know. Uh, give us an update next week, AZ Badfish, and let yeah, us know yeah. what you guys thought of the film. And thank you to Colossus FN for subscribing at Tier 1. Enjoy those oh, new emotes, man. Pop them in the know. chat if you have emotes. Yeah, use the emotes. Use, use them. The emotes. Wendy has her emote available. I have my own emote on Roga's channel. It's kind of cool. <laughs> they, they won't approve my face, but they approve Wendy's, so damn it. <laughs> use the emotes. So. <laughs> Um, oh, AZ Badfish says she's not really a big movie person in general. Oh, oh I see. I feel I you, see. bro. You just buy her the concession. Whatever concession she wants, yeah. just get it for her. Yeah. There it I is. Mean... Oh, there it is. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Look cute. At that. Look at that. Cute. <laughs> I like them. Cut. Cute. Um, all right. Where are we off to next year? And we'll keep track on the podcast, on the uh, box office, rather, for Lost City for sure as we as we go along here. What do we got next? Da, 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 da. <laughs> that was good that was really good was it, was it okay you're not gonna get copyright strike i hope you you're good, you are good. <laughs> so there's a competition show based on the very iconic james bond that's been greenlit over at prime video and this is via deadline so this is pretty cool this is uh called 007's road to a million uh, yeah. So the filming is going to start later this year. It's going to launch again exclusively on Prime Video. Uh, and we're going to see contestants in a two-man team, two-person team, compete in a global adventure to win the ultimate prize of up to one million pound, which equals out to after exchange rate and all that, $1.3 million. Yeah. Um, filmed in many historical locations featured throughout the seminal Bond films and this uh, cinematic format will be a test of intelligence and endurance. Uh, in addition to conquering physical op obstacles, they're going to also compete two-person team, have to answer questions hidden in different locations. This sounds like a grown-up yeah. uh, what is that? What's that game show we used to watch on was it Nickelodeon? Legend of the Hidden Temple? Oh yeah, Legend of the Hidden Temple. There's trivia, there's, you know, is there right. like temple guards that's going to come out and grab you, but they're like agents? Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to, that's really interesting and I like that it the locations like I want to be on the show. Can we yeah. enter? We you know you know yes you know the trivia knowledge. I can hold my own the physical stuff. Yeah, I mean just so like we can travel the world. I don't really care for the price. <laughs> I mean, listen, one million pounds that is one point three million dollars. So think of all the things we can buy for our streaming setup. That's a good point. That's a very, very good point. Are you kidding? We would need to buy a we'd just buy a studio. That would just be That's done true. for $1.3 million. I mean, for oh, God's sake. That'd be cool. Um, that'd be cool. Answer, but the questions are not trivia, are they? Because the questions, they just have to answer questions hidden in different locations. You're assuming it's going to be Bond trivia. God knows. This is true. Right? Because, yeah. But, I mean, you have so much knowledge in your head. That's true. I have very useless knowledge in my head. Well, you never know. It's <laughs> coming handy, depending on it's what true. the questions are, for God's yeah. sakes. Uh, but this, exactly. what, what you, I mean, this has been around, this has apparently been in motion for four years. Um, and I'm already hearing uh, some people clamoring, oh, see, this is how they're going to debase the Bond franchise that Amazon is oh, going to no. you know, mess on. with the brand by doing a reality show like this. But I think this actually 
promotes the brand more than it uh, devalues the brand. Don't you think this is fun for people who are Bond fans to go and yeah. explore and experience? You get dressed in a cool suit and you have to like yeah. maybe escape room your way out of the sticky, the sticky situation. You got Good agents point. after you. So you're racing against mm -hmm. time and the other people like that's really yeah. cool. And they're, they are casting. Oh, we should. Well, someone saying. should get uh, Mike Kalinowski uh, over there is as soon as possible is a big bond fan. That's for sure. Oh my so, gosh. You yeah. can apply Roka. We can apply. Oh, cut it out. I'm not. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. I, it might. Travel the world. So what? I kind of like my um, my couch. I kind of like this. <laughs> okay, if if I if I'll, I'm gonna apply and if I, right. I get a, a phone a friend, all right. Then if I'm you apply you. and you get in, fine, I'll Maybe, do it. it oh, oh, yeah. If you apply and you get in, I'll do I it. I think we both have to apply. Oh, okay. In, right. in order, in order for them to say, "Gosh, that'd be right, maybe me." I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. Right. Oh my at god! Least, yeah, at least take a look. Yeah, I'll take a look. It's, are people it. donating to, to to make you? <laughs> people like you miss a hundred shots of the shot you don't take. Oh, I know that pal. I know that pal. Um, right, <laughs> no one can accuse me of not taking the shots. No one can accuse me of not taking the shots. Yeah, I can be cute. That's right. I'll 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 get I'll build all the stuff you're gonna need for the uh, for the for the adventure. I, I might not be able to go, but I'll build you all the stuff you need. Like I need like the enemy. somebody who's experienced and in, in, you have so much experience though. Listen, why don't we put my brain in a jar and then you can take that with you and converse it. You have military line. training. That's who else is going to have this? That's entering. Oh, oh, oh. from our crew, not that's, a lot of people. Well, no. yeah. Not a lot of people, but yeah, that's not. A, it's not a bad point. It's not a bad point. But still, it's pretty cool. I think it's fun. I think it's great, yeah. and I'm sure it'll be really well shot, and it'll be a lot of fun. And they rarely make mistakes on those um, adventure shows. So those mm -hmm. are usually like, the world's greatest race and Survivor. Those are fun to watch. And uh, those are super fun to watch. The Amazing Race. Those are great to watch. So yeah. Um, all right. Where are we? Uh, where are we off to next year, Wendy? Let's take a look. Uh, let's talk about the the very popular new video that's just dropped on the internet. Um, the deleted Batman scene. Hello. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, let us know in the chat if you guys saw it, your thoughts on it. It yeah. was revealed because oh, also spoiler, if you hadn't watched the Batman or you didn't sit through the uh, end credit, maybe you want to yeah. earmuffs yourself for like the next few minutes. Um, <laughs> but I absolutely, it was, it's such a good scene. It's a whole five minutes. Yeah. It's excellent. excellent. Uh, the exchange between uh, the Batman and I mean, he didn't really say his name, so I guess we can continue to say it's the unnamed prisoner. Yeah, because that's how unnamed he was. Uh, he was credited, but we have Barry Keong here yeah. playing uh, an iteration of of the Joker. I know he's not named the Joker quite yet, but you know, uh, you can tell that the Batman and him have had past encounters already, mm -hmm. or otherwise mm -hmm. he wouldn't have gone to him with all this stuff about the Riddler. So I'm kind of torn now because yesterday my initial reaction when I first watched it was I wished the scene was in the film because the, the exchange Ooh. and the acting was so good. Right. But then on the flip side, after reading a bunch of comments like, but mm -hmm. if you put it in there, one, it takes away from the audience, yeah. not just their attention from one Batman and two, the Riddler, but Joker kind of gave up all the info. Yeah. And yeah. then it wouldn't have given Batman to do all the things that he he was able to do in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and the audience can kind of, you know, participate from their seats in a sense of guessing, like, what's the next step and what's yeah. the connection and why is he doing this? So but I really like that Matt Reeves was able to release the deleted scene. That makes me think about what next what we're going to get in the next Batman film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly um, it's such a interesting scene. And as you said, they clearly know each other because uh, right off the bat, Joker's like, oh, it's the one year anniversary. What's the anniversary paper? So they've known each other for over a year. So clearly either Batman or the Joker had something to do with turning himself into the way he looks now. And the way he looks now, and I wonder, because it's been a year, mm -hmm. he hasn't healed from anything. So this is what he's going to look like. He's got the over puffed up lips. He's got the teeth all mangled. He's got the divots in the back of his skull, which are disgusting to look at. So 
all of the and, and on purpose like i'm you know on purpose they're making it that way um and and so he's got his way of talking and communicating and it's it was a really well done scene between both of them and it makes you wonder why they took it out did they not want to introduce the joker in that way did they want to be more subtle i would have preferred that scene yeah. over the scene we got at the end of the movie with the riddler because i think this is a better way to introduce that character in the world of the batman that you're creating in this universe mm -hmm. robert pattinson so to me and it clearly is somewhere in the middle of the movie this scene because of certain props that are used um that they are using in the film at the same time or that you know alfred figures out the code it's a printout of the code that alfred and him figured out together so clearly this is somewhere in the middle of the movie where the batman still hasn't found the riddler yet or who the riddler is so i would have loved to have seen that um as your uh, as your introduction of this character i think people would have lost their minds if you had done it that way mm -hmm. that being said i don't know what the purpose of releasing this is are they saying they're not doing joker or are they releasing this so that people who are saying oh god do we have to do joker again mm -hmm. change their minds about it and be like okay if this is the way you're going now i'm interested i don't know what do you think I think uh, because the movie is doing so well in theaters, mm. um, partially it can be let's everybody's still very excited about the film. A lot of people have seen it at this point, which mm -hmm. means they know of that end credit scene. And for anyone that was confused about it, here's a here's a more almost like in a way of extended look oh, yeah. at that scene to give you more of insight. If somebody, got, I'm pretty sure everybody knew because of yeah. the laugh at the end. But yeah. I feel like this scene made that final scene made more sense to me okay. um, a, a little bit as to why the Joker would be even seeking out uh, the Riddler to talk to him. Uh, and just, I think a tease up for what's to come in mm. the next films. Uh, yeah. Maybe they put the Joker in the next one, or maybe they put him on in the, in, put him in the one after that. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I think we're going to see in the next movie moments of, uh, that character yeah. in it, unless he is like the main protagonist, the main antagonist. Yeah. And I've, and I've seen some people claim that this is their way of kind of opening the door to that Arkham series that Matt Reeves is supposedly working on now. Mm. Maybe this is Matt Reeves's way kind of, of presenting how he would approach an Arkham series. And Ooh, so you can yeah. have, right. Someone like Barry Keegan play the Joker in an Arkham series because clearly they're spending a lot of money on these uh, shows now from these studios. Uh, yeah. Certainly if you're looking at Disney as any kind of indication, I'm sure Warner Brothers and HBO are going to be quite happy spending that money if you <laughs> get characters like the Joker and other characters involved in this arc. They're not going to be a main character, but could be a recurring character in the Arkham mm -hmm. series and then lead up to either the sequel or the, th or the third installment um in the batman series down the road so we shall see but either way this is a great way to kind of sample what barry is doing with that character and it's a completely different thing that we've seen before in my opinion yeah, yeah. i really like it I, I like that that it didn't remind me of anything any, anybody else anybody yeah. else's joker i agree know? with that i like Absolutely. that a lot yeah um we i think did we do we call out this cheers already by mama uh, no i don't think so mama saying about the two scenes uh, yes, uh, who yeah. says, I think both Joker scenes should be included or none at all. Mm. Only having the one didn't work for me. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, having the end one didn't work for me. Uh, having the first one would have worked. But yeah, maybe you could have included this, the, the end scene of the movie connected to that uh, um, Joker scene because it would have made sense. Oh, I already know the Joker's there. So having the interaction doesn't feel tacked on it feels like yes this makes sense because mm -hmm. we already were introduced to the joker in an earlier scene so yeah you might make a good point might make it a good point there mama and thanks so much for the cheers thank you so much yeah definitely um okay let's keep uh, powering through our stuff here wendy we're at 48 minutes into the show where are we off to next let's go to what's trending i thought you'd never ask Come on now, come on. I should let that music just play and play. Um, <laughs> so let's get into what's trending. What's the first thing on our trending list? K-pop corner, as usual, Stray mm -hmm. Kids, their comeback in full effect. Last week, we we got Maniac. Maniac? 
I don't know yeah. the rest of the words. Uh, this week we have Venom or Spiderweb. You can translate that um, however way you want. I've seen it written both ways. But this yeah. is a, a darker tone song. It looks like they are tied up. And, and the video, not, not talking about like the lyrics, but the video yeah. makes me feel like some of the, the members are playing like double agent and uh you know because one of them was able to bunch uh chum being was able to get out of the handcuffs earlier on but i like the overall darker tone because maniac mm -hmm. is a little bit more kind of like the song it's a it's a bit um what is it called more the oh uh, it's it's a bit like crazy the vibe is a little mm -hmm. bit crazy this one's a little bit more toned down darker right. even though it has the high energy and i love the beats every single time stray kids come uh -huh. out with the new beats i'm just like i don't know how they do it they're just so freaking good um so i'm still you know i was talking to laura siri cole mm. i said i just saw her at the moon Knight, uh event and we're like dude we gotta get tickets to stray kids so maybe <laughs> she's good at it you know oh. she's going to vegas for permission to dance for bts yes yeah, she is i see so, she's tweeting about it like crazy yeah. And did you know, it's not just the concert itself. Like Vegas is going full in on this. There's themed BTS rooms in different hotels. Wow. There's what? themed BTS, uh, like food spots areas. And the, like there's, they're turning Vegas purple. Wow. For BTS. You know what isn't talked about enough is the marketing team behind these, uh, I mean, these groups. It is brilliant. Who comes up with these ideas Shout out to them for being smart of, and then finding the right partners in the uh, in Vegas to be willing to do these things and set up these rooms because you know how many people from the BTS army are going to be there. They may not even be going to the concert because they couldn't get tickets, but they want to be there to be around the energy of BTS being in Vegas uh, for those days and hanging out with other members of the BTS army. So going to these rooms in a way is a kind of, Way of satisfying their their BTS fandom, even if they can't go to the concerts. So this is yeah. genius. Uh, and right? yes, the, these these songs are bangers, and the music videos are incredible. Here, a lot of symbolism going on in these music videos. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff about what it means, the idea of being trapped, this idea of super spy, double agents. A lot of meaning going on in these music videos. They're incredibly well shot. This is a renaissance. To me, in my opinion, the renaissance happening on, in the K-pop videos is a renaissance of music videos themselves. Mm -hmm. and it's fantastic to watch. It really, yeah. Honestly, yeah. It's just, it, and it's like right on what you said about like who markets these, you know, the, the agencies in yeah. uh, in South Korea. They're just, when, when they go all in for their idols, they go all in. And I yeah. know specifically for BTS, like the approval process, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. want to, so for example, like the, the BTS theme roomed, themed rooms like yeah. the agency approves of that wow and you have to go through a bunch of like approval before they can say yay or nay so right. they right. They're, they're moving very quickly on this because this is literally happening in like weeks <laughs> so, very excited uh yeah. so it's happy days for if you're an army if you're a stay if you're mm -hmm. a revel love for the re new red velvet music video called fill my rhythm that's beautiful as well it's very mm. artsy it's a very right. like a fantastic they built like a skating rink a tiny little skating rink for wow. as a part of because all their sets are for the most part practical. Yeah, there are some visual effects, but there's not a lot of green screens. What you see is what you get. So right. I think that's really cool. So if you haven't checked out the Street Kids made videos, Venom, Maniac, and Red Velvet's Feel My Rhythm, check those out. They're really freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah, get on that stuff, people. Get, get on that on stuff. It. I need an album for Street Kids. I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> I need I need to go and and get it. There's a K-pop store near me, so I think I might hit it up this weekend. What? There's a K-pop store in LA? Really? Mm, there's so many. That's there's so, so many. Yeah. So you just go in. I mean, it's mostly like BTS stuff, but then there's, right, you know, right. you, if you want if you want the albums, you can get many, many groups, different albums. Do you run into Laura there every once in a while or, or Emma? Emma Five? Suppose, suppose, you know what? No, I don't. <laughs> it's like we're all on different schedules. But we're all we're all watching and listening to the same music. <laughs> um, all right, all right, there you go. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Where are we off to next year, Wendy? 
let's go into the parks for a second. Let's go to Disneyland. Uh, let's go to Galaxy's Edge specifically because for Star Wars fans, there is a brand new lightsaber available today. Wow. Today is the day that they release. So uh, this character, you may have heard of him if you played mm -hmm. uh, Star Wars Fallen Order. That is one Cal Kestis, and his lightsaber is now available for purchase wow. at Galaxy's Edge. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, it's the one that's, you know, the one that he acquires. So when it's um, damaged yeah. on one end. But if you have the funds to do it, you can actually buy both. And there is an adapter so you can actually put it together and you can make it a double lightsaber if you wow. wish. Or you can just buy just the one. There it is. And wow. the, uh, it, I mean, it looks freaking cool. Yeah. That might be one of the coolest li looking like, I mean, they and all of their lightsabers. I don't say this lightly because all their lightsabers mm -hmm. look really cool. But this is, it's not often we get to see a video game um, lightsaber yeah. made yeah. into like a, physical practical real life thing so i think this is huge they actually had disney park blogs had a poll like an official poll up like whose lightsaber would you like to see right. uh, and cal Kestis was the one that got the most votes so naturally they made that one yeah and i'm gonna be nice. stalking my friends later on tiktok to see if some of them went out and, and got it <laughs> or not i bet somebody did can i well, i'm gonna bring this up again you know who um you know what's dangerous about this lightsaber? That woman's fingernails. Those things look like they could cut you in half quicker than that saber can. <laughs> almighty, those are those are long and quite pointy. Good God almighty. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there. So yeah, just as dangerous as anything else, anything, any lightsaber you could find. Um, yeah, so that's out there for you all to enjoy if you want to get it. Uh, and, you know, that's so smart. Galaxy's Edge always adding new things to get new people involved or to get people come back. And enjoy new stuff on there. Just it's just so great. So yeah, um, cool. All right, and then uh, what we got? Shanghai Disneyland. Oh, what happened here? Or, well, or, it's or unfortunately current. It's currently closed because yeah. they're experiencing um, a raising level concerning uh, of COVID cases. So mm -hmm. it's just going to be um, better for uh, and safer for guests yeah. and staff alike for them to close their doors. They don't have a reopening date announced so it's almost yeah. like indefinitely but i'm guessing it's probably up to a month at most mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh when once they can get it under control i'm sure they will reopen again uh yeah. but i do applaud that you know the theme park over there is able to just say no this is not happening we're gonna we gotta stop the spread and we right. know how busy and crowded a theme park can get so let's just shut it down right now yeah, I mean, uh, they, according to the data they have here, um, the uh, Om Omicron, the asymptomatic Omicron variant cases of COVID-19 hit the 1,500 people per day mark in China. That's what wow. caused it. Yeah. Um, the, a sister park, the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort, had already announced that it would remain closed until April 20th, um, while the Shanghai Resort had started operating on a reduced capacity last week and now... It's closing down. Uh, they're mm. saying that the cases have reached a total of more than 130,000 cases uh, back in China. So it's happening all over again on the China side of things. And we saw, um, Wendy, how it affected the BAFTAs. And I'm very curious to hear about the Oscars. I think Michelle Yao got diagnosed with COVID as well. Oh, no. I think. And she had been doing a number of maskless interviews with people on the red carpet so yeah. oh yeah two days ago we're yeah there are some people who are possibly getting this or afraid of getting this so i mean wear your masks people i last night i watched that whole movie wearing a mask last night because it was a fan screening and i don't trust fans to not be to, to be vaccinated so i wore my mask the whole time as i heard coughs and sneezes and all kinds of stuff going around me just in case uh so yeah. you, you got to be careful because it is not over, and there's that BA2 variant that's roaming through now. We don't know how. What's that one? Hold up. <laughs> Wendy, you don't know about the BA2? Oh, I try not to read it too much because. Man, Wendy, you got to. What, what? I know, but it makes me anxious. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm, I'm already crazy. Like, yes, I, you guys see me at theme parks and stuff like that, but masks are yeah. on unless we oh, are totally. eating food. And it's yeah. like the, these hands are so dry. And we just got tested. I got tested like a week ago. I usually oh, go every, every two to three weeks to get tested. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an Omicron sub, -var sub variant. And it's BA2. It is spreading rapidly in LA. So be careful there, Wendy. Um, 
So that's and this is why I still wear my mask and things, just in case. Exactly. Uh, Kim Horcher post, post, posted on Twitter the other. She said, um, "Coronavirus, it, it, you know, it's still happening. People goes to a grocery store, nobody's wearing their masks." Oh um, yeah, yeah, that's scary right now. It is uh, right now. Uh, this last uh, Thursday, they released data here: fourteen point seven percent of the coronavirus samples analyzed for LA from the last couple of weeks were. The highly contagious BA2 subvariant, which is more than double what it was the previous two weeks when they did the numbers. So they're telling people to still adhere to these recommendations, continue wearing masks in public. This setting. is what happens. Doesn't it feel like every single time we lift the mask mandate? Yeah. It's New because viruses thing. needs to survive. So yeah. they mutate in order to. So the more like it's going to mutate until I think I'm not a yeah. scientist. So take this with a, please. This is not a professional thing I'm saying here, she but, plays I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it'll mutate, mutate, mutate until it gets to something of the severity level of a flu. Maybe that would be, and I, and I know the flu can be detrimental to some people. It can be deadly. Yes. Yeah. But so great. like Dustin had the flu once we had to go to the hospital. The man was running 105 fever and I was like, uh, yeah, we're not okay. <laughs> so he so he went and he got the flu and after and that we always got the flu shot because he was so horribly sick i didn't know uh, how to how to get the because he felt cold but he was hot right and the doctor's like you can't be wearing jackets we got to lower your temperature he's like but i'm so cold they're like that's because you're sick yeah 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 he's and like, then they gave I'm him fine. his first ever swab test yeah. i'm fine don't yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how it happens. Yeah. Just pass out. Um, in the southwestern U.S., um, and we're getting this from the L.A. Times, by the way, uh, California, Arizona, Nevada, and Hawaii, of those four, uh, BA2 made up an estimated 41% of the coronavirus samples. And the previous week, it was only 28%. It is now the dominant subvariant in the Northeast and is believed to be 30 to 60% more contagious than the earlier Omicron. Uh, but it does appear to result in more. It doesn't appear to result in more. It does not appear to result in more severe illness. So you can be infected with it uh, and you'll have a little bit of immunity. If you had the Omicron subvariant before, you mm. can have a little bit of immunity against the BA2. So, Jesus. <sighs> so we shall see. But I, I hate, hate it. it. I hate it. Oh my God. I'm not going to it. Uh, so there we go. Yeah. And the Star Wars celebration is right around the corner too, Wendy. That's kind of Yeah, scary. I know. I applied for a media pass, but Me now too. I'm a little Me too. Well, I mean just I'm going to double mask then. Yeah. Just go and double mask. Instead I'm going to wear a hat and... <laughs> face shield, gloves, goggles. I'm going to cosplay as a stormtrooper and never take it down. <laughs> You. You're shielded. You don't have to touch anybody. <laughs> you just you just lice all that costume down at the end of the day. Focus on the hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, we'll keep an eye on it because certainly, yes. uh, and we'll see what happens to the Oscars because I mean they initially said there was going to be no testing, and now because of what happened at the Baftas, uh, they're kind of maybe adjusting their testing for this uh, ceremony. So we shall see how that uh, plays out. Because they um, should just do it. Yeah, I agree. to keep everybody safe. They yeah. should just do it. If you're going to have not your, if you don't want your stars to have to wear masks, just test them. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. What do we got? To, we're running out of time. We're over an hour here. Yes. We've got to wrap it up here. What, what else have we got to, that we should hit here? Uh, let's uh, let's go into uh, our coming soon and recommendation. Okay. So I uh, would love to hear, uh, you know, uh, what you saw recently and what you're recommending. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, coming soon, everything, everywhere, all at once. We spoke about it already. Can't recommend it enough. You guys got to go see this film. Uh, I saw Lost City. Uh, so recommending that as well um, when you get a chance to go see it. I also have uh, coming up uh, this week, I will be going to see Morbius and Fantastic Beasts on the same hey. day. On the oh. same day. So it'll be 10 a.m. Morbius, 7 p.m. Fantastic Beasts. So it's going to be a full day of stuff and reactions uh, for sure to it. But those are, the, those are the ones that are coming soon that I definitely recommend. And, and on my side, um, on TV, there are two really cool things. First, Atlanta season three dropped. Uh, the first two episodes dropped yesterday so definitely watch that um and i we powered through the first seven episodes of the dropout which is the elizabeth holmes series so if i i got the first seven episodes through a press contact so 
there's only, I think the first five or six are out. I can't recommend it enough for you guys to watch this series. If you know about the Elizabeth Holmes Theranos situation and Amanda Seyfried is going next level as an actress in this series. So I can't recommend it enough. And then one more series that just started on Netflix for you that are cinephiles, uh, fans of movies or cinephile fans or film fans, one perfect shot. They took that Twitter account that has the one perfect shot and they turned it into a series and Ava DuVernay is interviewing directors about one shot, classic iconic shot in their movie and how it was constructed, how it was built, what came about, why they included that shot in the movie. So very fascinating documentary if you're a film fan, uh, series rather, documentary series if you're a film fan to enjoy for sure. Uh, what about you, Wendy? What do you got? Uh, well, naturally, uh, I am very excited for Moon Knight coming up. I got to mm. sneak peek. The first two episodes, I'm not going to say too much because I know Roka hasn't watched it yet. I think he will yeah. after after this. Um, so uh, I, I just, to kind of echo what we talked about last week, a lot of people were saying that this is the most different Marvel show. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that most Marvel shows are all different. You know, they kind of center around the vibe of their lead character. But this feels also the most cinematic. Oh, yeah. Out of the bunch. Um, and do you remember Scott Menzel said, it felt DC and it was in yeah. a good way. Yeah. I now know what he is saying and I won't say in which episode I saw that in. So you'll have to kind of, you know, um, yeah. do, but it's, it's Oscar Isaac is phenomenal mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this and uh, Ethan Hawke as well. Yeah. Like his character is creepy. <sighs> it's really creepy. So yeah, get ready for a crazy ride. Cause he, I, I, I can't even, <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, and then uh, there, I just saw the trailer for this, and I'm seeing it next week or the yeah. week after. The Northman, fun focus feature. Nice. Uh, yeah, Nicole Kidman, Alexander Skarsgård, uh, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Uh, I think Bjork is in this as well. Yeah, Bjork is absolutely in this. Yeah, yeah. which makes sense if you <laughs> the yeah. title of the film. So very much looking forward to it. And there's also like a fun little thing that they invited me to that I have to re reply oh, to. Oh, nice. So I think. I think I might be going to that as well. And then was it you that talked to me about the bad vegan, the bad vegan? Yes. Did you finally watch it? What the heck, man? Right. I'm only on episode two, but what the heck? Oh my God. You're only episode two? When? Yeah. It's insane. I don't even, you know, is it bad for me that I don't feel that terrible for her as of right no, now? No, it isn't okay. bad for you. And that's not going to change. Let me okay. Because out. as she explains things, I'm like, yes, okay. But at what point did you stop and go? Right. This is at, not common sense. And yeah, and at one point, did you go, "Hey, this works for me because of all the other stuff that's happening in my life right now. I'm going to do this." And so, it's a very interesting film, a documentary series that explores, and it's a real story. It only had what in 2018 yeah. this happened, so it's very recent, and how someone was supposedly taken advantage of by someone who was toxic in their approach or did that person use that toxicity for their own benefits because they wanted to get out of a certain situation. So very, mm -hmm. very interesting documentary series for sure. And there's a lot of backlash towards her. I've seen online already on social media and stuff. So and just a very interesting documentary. So yeah, highly recommend that one as well. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else that you recommend or that you saw? Go see Lost City. It's a it's a good fun rom com adventure movie, and a lot of people are calling it. It's a rip off of like Romancing the Stone. Sure, you can say that. A lot of movies borrow that same sure plot, right? But uh, yeah. what makes it fun and unique is the chemistry between Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum, um, yeah. and this and this one other character that pops in for for a bit uh, <laughs> that you will you will love. I loved it. Yeah. You gotta I wasn't it. expecting it. I was like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you got to hold this coconut. That's for sure. Way he handles business. So it's a, yeah, absolutely recommend that one uh, for sure. I'll definitely be watching Moon Knight at some point uh, tonight or tomorrow. Start the process of all four of those episodes. So looking forward to diving into that, Wendy. So glad to hear you're liking it. And yeah, The Northman, I've gotten a streaming for this. I'm desperate. I just submitted to be to do the press junket for it. So oh, I'm desperate to see this. When is movie. that? Oh, well, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me on air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know when the Northman is going to come out in terms of, but I may be able to get a, hopefully I can get a screening of it or something at some point real soon because the junket is, I'm sure, it's kind of around the corner. So maybe I'll need to maybe uh, reach back out. 
Yeah, yeah. They said the yeah. in-person press screenings are going to be announced soon, so we shall see. Um, all right, cool. All right, well, there we go. I think that's – oh, we got one more cheer that came through. Sorry about that. Oh, and sorry. Who is it here? It was Theral Unification. Where's Theral? Where, oh, here uh, we go. there it is. Uh, <laughs> like, good luck watching Morbius uh, there. It's got Razzies in the future there. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? The film's not out yet, though. I know he's just guessing. He or she is just oh. guessing because uh, um, it doesn't look good. According, to, I would imagine it doesn't look good to him in terms of the um, uh, trailer or whatever. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Mm. I'm holding out hope that it's good. Certainly, I wasn't a fan of the Venom movie, so we'll see if this one turns out to be oh wait a better experience. So yeah. MK says interesting to see the director of Morbius just spoiling the movie on Twitter via a tweet thread with Ooh. Cinema Blend. What? Is that what happened? Ooh, that is not a good thing. Cinema Blend finding themselves in some hot water lately, either indirectly or directly. Uh, you know, kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to take a look at that. I'm just going to watch the movie in a few days. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm literally watching it like soon, so I don't want to yeah. know. And then one more thing, Thurl's asking Ethan Hawke in black. Uh, nope. Uh, sorry, Mumra says creepier than his black phone character in talking about Ethan Hawke. Mm. Well. I would say the black phone character is creepier right now, but I'm comparing one movie that I've seen in its entirety yeah. to a show that I only saw two episodes of. So I only really got to see Arthur for like a second. Right. Right. <laughs> and he, yeah. and he creeps me out already. <laughs> uh, so I, I think it's a very different kind of creepy. There you go. You'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. I know I'm like being very vague, but you'll see. Well, you gotta be vague. It's not out yet. Yeah. Be um all right there we go all right well thanks everybody for watching our live episode here of the john and wendy show we appreciate you all hanging out with us every friday uh especially those of you send in bits and cheers and uh stream labs it means the world to us so thank you very very much we love you madly wendy another fun show please tell people where they can find you thank you so much you can find me on instagram and on twitter at my name wendy lee zane you can find me on youtube uh at the movie couple channel and on twitch i'm not streaming much these days because i'm so busy but uh you can find me on Twitch.tv slash Wendy Lee Zaney or on TikTok as well. I'm just apparently everywhere. Just search my name in one of the platforms. I'll probably come up. <laughs> you'll, find her. you'll find her. Trust me. Uh, as for me, you can find me at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch. Uh, and um, as you're watching now, so if you're watching later on YouTube, you might want to subscribe there. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube later, please make sure you hit a subscribe button, hit that bell button. Trying to cross that 25,000 subscribers mark. Really would appreciate y'all coming over and subscribing if you haven't subscribed to the channel so you can see everything we're dropping here on the channel. All right, uh, make sure you remember that I will be doing an Oscars watch along. I'm going to announce if it's on Twitch or YouTube uh, probably tomorrow on Saturday, uh, and there'll be more stuff coming for me over the weekend as well. You guys are awesome. Love you madly, and we'll talk to you next time with another brand new live episode of the John and Wendy Show. Peace. Bye.